Welcome everyone and thank you for joining me uh, for our midweek devotion. We don't take this lightly. We are so grateful that you allow us into the privacy of your own home uh, during this time of the lockdown. Uh, we are coming together when uh, the lockdown restrictions are slowing down a little uh, in Zimbabwe and uh, uh, we hope that one day we will be able to meet together normally uh, as before. But as the situation demands us to meet this way, I just want to ask to thank the Lord for such an opportunity as this that we can meet virtually like this, but still continue to serve the Lord. Uh, if you are joining us for the first time, uh, welcome. Uh, and welcome to our preaching series on the book of Nehemiah. And at the moment, uh, we have gone through five chapters. Um, and uh, last week, last Sunday, I preached on chapter five. Uh, and as the norm here at Northside on Wednesdays, we have a midweek devotion that goes uh, into that chapter either due to give a deeper, some deeper details on it, or we try to look at another angle uh, to, to the chapter. And so today, we shall look at uh, Nehemiah chapter five. I'm not going to read the text, but I would urge you, if you have not been reading Nehemiah, to pause uh, the video for a while and read through the chapter, the 19 verses, and then and then join me um, and, uh, and, 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 and move on with it. Um, so when we looked at this chapter, we saw uh, two important things, that uh, there was an outcry uh, from the poor because of the oppression that was coming from the rich, those who were loading it over the poor, and the poor ended up losing their fields, their vineyards, uh, their houses to to their uh, to those who had bought, uh, you know, lended money to them. So today we, we also looked at the second thing we saw was Nehemiah's pattern of leadership. And something stood up to me uh, uh, during the week. I looked at how uh, leadership is the crisis we have in many in African country and also uh, particularly in Zimbabwe. And uh, looking at Nehemiah's type of leadership, it just prompted me to want to speak a little bit about this pattern of leadership we see the main Nehemiah exhibiting uh, during in this chapter. And so uh, you remember we saw Nehemiah showing very good leadership qualities. We saw that he was uh, someone who was God-fearing. He would pray to God. He was prayerful. He was someone with strategy. But in this chapter, we shall look at the other dimensions that are evident in this chapter. Uh, and we see that in Nehemiah's pattern of leadership, that he feared God. He was a godly leader. So that's where it starts. For us to have godly leadership, it starts with our relationship with God. And I know that many of us, almost all of us, are involved in some form of leadership one way or the other. Either it's in your home, it's at the workplace, whether you are involved in national politics, whether you are uh, just a, you know, an older sibling to your younger siblings. One way or the other, you are involved in leadership. But it starts with good leadership, starts with you being a godly leader, one who fears the Lord. And in verse 15, Nehemiah says, all my men, um, in verse 15, Nehemiah says, uh, sorry, um, but the earlier governors, those preceding me, placed a heavy burden on the people and took 40 shekels of silver uh, from them in addition to food and wine. Their assistants also loaded it over the people, but out of reverence for God, I did not act like that. So it is out of reverence for God that he did not uh, put a heavy burden on the people. And this is what we're talking about, that it starts with godly, uh, uh, a godly principle or someone who fears the Lord. And when you talk of fearing the Lord, it's not only the fear and trembling, but it is reverential fear that leads to obedience. So he was obedient to God. He was someone who feared the Lord. And in verse 6 and verse 18, we see that Nehemiah was a compassionate leader. He felt for the other people who are told that when he heard about the practices that were going on, he was very angry. He was angry at sin. But not only that, he was angry because he felt the pain those people who were being oppressed felt. And in verse 18, 
he also says that uh, I never demanded the food allotted to the governor because the demands were heavy on these people. He felt compassion over these people. And this is a principle we saw even with our Lord Jesus, that many times he had compassion over people and he did something. He, did, he wasn't only compassionate, but he turned his compassion to action. We see him uh, being compassionate with the people who were hungry, the 5,000, and then he transformed or he changed, uh, he, he multiplied the five loaves and two fish to feed the 5,000. So we see a compassionate leader in Nehemiah. And we also see that he was the voice of the voiceless. From verse 7 we, to 13, he speaks on behalf of this poor. So the poor people went to Nehemiah and gave them, gave him their plight. And he carried their plight and went and spoke with these people. Maybe if these um, poor people would have tried to speak with uh, um, the ones they owed or the um, the money lenders, they wouldn't have listened to them. But Nehemiah realizes it and uses his position as governor to go and confront these very people and speak to them about the wrong that they were doing, you know, charging usury, charging exorbitant interests on the loans, and even taking uh, the sons and daughters for those who had uh, borrowed money from them into slavery. So we see Nehemiah standing to speak for the voiceless. I wonder how we are standing up to do the same, how we are speaking for the orphans, how we are speaking for uh, the sick, how we are speaking for those who are failing to put food on the table, how we are speaking for those who are being, ring, who are being wrongly accused for uh, crimes they did not commit. I wonder how we are being the voice of the voiceless, and especially the church, that we are the prophetic voice of God. Are we playing the passive or are we actively involved in speaking uh, for those, for the voiceless? And we also see that Nehemiah was the servant of the lowest person in society. And we see servant leadership here, where Nehemiah is willing to serve those who are of low status. The people who came to cry out to him were people who were regarded as very low in society but he had time to listen to them and to serve them. How did he serve them? He served them by being their voice to speak out. And when he did speak out, we saw the results that came out. And the results were everyone was willing to stop the ashari, but also to pay back part of the uh, things that they had taken from them, part of the interest that they had taken from them, the interest on wine, the interest on oil, uh, and even to give back the fields and vineyards that they had taken. So we see servant leadership, not only in lip service. We have heard many of our leaders saying we are, want to be servant leaders. We are servant leaders. We have heard even our president saying that. But the issue is not saying the words, I am a servant leader, but it is about what we are doing to transform the lives of those who are, whom we are saving. And we also see that he did not want to leave anyone behind. He was an inclusive leader. So with others, it could have been, you know, as as long as those who are in the same category as me are moving forward, I move with them. But he went back down to pick those who were left behind to bring them into the fold with others. Just like our Lord Jesus, who takes everyone, he loves everyone, he calls everyone to faith and repentance. He doesn't show partiality, he doesn't care what their financial status is, he doesn't care what their um, background is, what their historical background is, or he just takes people for who they are. They are God's creation and he loves them uh, the same. So we see Nehemiah here that he's a leader who takes everyone on board. I don't know about you, wherever you are, God has placed you as a leader. Are you an inclusive leader, a leader who takes care of everything, a leader who doesn't want to leave people behind? You know, many times people have cliques. Leaders are accused of being in this clique or that clique, and they are leaving uh, some people behind. As leaders, we need to move with everyone. And uh, uh, even as we cry for change in our country, 
uh, and I'm not talking of change of government, but I'm talking of change in the way we do business and the change in the way we lead. We are crying that leadership would be inclusive, include everyone. The voice of the voiceless include those who are voiceless, that whatever they say or, 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 or whisper, be attentive to their plight. And we see from verses 16 to 18 that he cared more for the people than for himself. He was a selfless leader. As a governor, he was entitled for an allotment to be given food and wine uh, to be provided for because of what is, 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 a, is a benefit which came with his office. But he did not take that allocation for the sole reason that they, it was going to be a heavy burden on the people. Because when we say he was given an allocation or an allotment, it meant that it didn't mean that he would receive it from the king of Persia. But the king of Persia would have the governor levy it on the people in the in the locality to pay for those expenses. So it only meant that Nehemiah was going to levy or to to demand this allocation from the people in Judah. But because he loved these people so much, he actually forsook his right and many times we fight for our rights this is what is an, i am entitled to this is what i must be given because of this position i hold but this man a man who was selfless a man who had compassion over people a man who was inclusive a man who was compassionate he actually had to forego that right but not only that we also see that he even went a step further because of his love for these people, to feed people. He went on to feed them from his own material possessions. And another thing that stood out for me is that Nehemiah was an approachable leader. He was ready to listen, even to listen to those people who were regarded as outcasts or those people who were good for nothings, but he listened to them. He was approachable. I wonder how approachable you are. If people think of you, do they think of you as a, as a friend? You know, our Lord Jesus Christ called his followers friends. Can our followers, wherever we lead, can they rightly call us follow? I mean, friend? And I think in the same way as Jesus was calling them friends, I think they called him friends, a friend as well. We saw that Nehemiah called the people who worked for him, his followers, he called them brothers. He didn't call them servants. So he was an approachable leader. And the world is calling for people who are approachable. I just wonder if I would like to speak to the president of Zimbabwe today and send a message to him to want to speak to him. Will he allow me in his presence? If he will not, then he is not a pattern of good leadership. The pattern of good leadership will be approachable. Maybe uh, he would be someone uh, who he might want to meet with me, but because there are so many people that I'll go through before I get to him, uh, I might be my I might be obstructed from reaching him by those who are around him. But that still is a problem because he becomes unapproachable. But we hear that name. I did not hear it from a second, third, or fourth part. But the people cried out to him. As leaders, we need to be approachable. Approachable by any of our subordinates, regardless of where they are in the, in, the, in the social strata. Then we also see that he was in touch with the reality. And as I said earlier on, he wasn't told by third and fourth parties, but he was there. He was a relevant leader, a person who is there. He was available. People could speak with him. And he also set a good example of, I mean, for his subordinates. So he was an exemplary leader. We hear uh, that the other governors who had come before him, they had loaded it over the people. And the servants of these governors had also burdened the people following the bad example set by their leaders. And we see Nehemiah saying, but I did not do it the same way. I did not give a burden on the people and my Servants also didn't do that. We didn't acquire any land. We didn't take any allocations. And this is the type of leadership our country is longing for. This is the type of leadership the church is longing for, a leadership that is exemplary. 
a leadership which gives the good things so that those who see can copy what is right. People learn fast by seeing what we do than when we tell them to do things. So it is better to leave a good example for your children. And when they look at the, your example, how you do things, you are most likely to have them follow in your footsteps. If you are at the workplace, the way you, re, re, uh, you work with the people in the, the workplace as the leader, set an example of what they will follow after you. If corruption begins at the top, it is most likely to infiltrate to the bottom. If people at the top resolve not to be corrupt, it can also help the people at the bottom not to do it because they have no excuse. Their leaders are not showing them that example. Their leaders are not doing it. So why would they do it? So it will be consistent. That is, we talk about uh, what the right conduct. We are also living the right conduct. The problem has been many times we speak as leaders what we want our subordinates to do, but we don't live it out. So we see Nehemiah's exemplary leadership. Nehemiah was also willing to give from his possessions through, though he was entitled to receive. So we see here a generous leader. He was generous. He wasn't mean. He didn't, he didn't want things for himself, but he thought about others before he thought about himself to the extent that he gave like 365 um, head of cattle in a year to be slaughtered for the people he led. We also looked at for the 12 years that he lived in Jerusalem, over 25,000 sheep were slaughtered that he provided for for the people who came out to dine with him. So we are seeing someone who was very generous. And as a leader, we need to be generous. We need to think about those who are, uh, the welfare of the people under us more than we think about ourselves. Are we giving them a good remuneration? Are we taking care of them well? Do they have a medical aid? We think about those things than thinking about ourselves more. Uh, this is the example even of the Lord Jesus as well. He was generous in that he gave his own life for you and for me. If he had thought about himself, he, had, he could have remained in heaven, enjoying the glory of heaven with his Father and, and the Holy Spirit. But because he was so generous, so he was so compassionate of the people, of me and you, he came to die for us. And we also see that uh, Nehemiah was hospitable. He allowed people in his home. And as leaders, we need to allow people in our spaces. Many times we close doors because we are overly busy and we cannot accommodate this or accommodate that. And maybe we pick and choose who we allow in our presence. But we see that Nehemiah says he fed the Jews, he fed the officials, but he also fed those who came to visit. And this would be a mixed bag of people, poor, old young, rich, you name it. Now, as we see from this character, Nehemiah, we see that leadership is not a title. Many people say, don't you know that I'm the president of this country? Don't you know that I'm the first lady? Uh, and it becomes about titles. But leadership is the difference we make in other people's lives. So we see Nehemiah as a great man here. Why? Because he made a difference. You know, when he spoke and people resolved we will give back what we have uh, taken from these people. And they ended up, all of them, calling amen, praise be to God. That is the change that he brought. Those who were oppressed were, led, were, were freed. Those whose fields had gone were given back. And the change that he even did to the people who were exacting Ashari by pointing them to their error, it is a change that he made because they repented of their sin. So leadership is the difference we make in people's lives? Are we making that difference? And John Maxwell says, a leader is one who knows the way, goes the way and shows the way. So Nehemiah knew the way and he went that way. He didn't exit Ajari. He borrowed for no interest. Uh, he landed money for no interest. And he showed the way to those who were blind, those who were exiting Ajari on others. So a leader is one who knows the way, goes the way, and shows the way. Now, the question for you and I is what kind of a leader are you? 
what kind of a leader are you? Are you the boss leader, the one who is sitting and making people work? Go, he tells them. Or are you the leader, the model we find in Nehemiah, the one who says, let's go, and he is at the front doing that which is uh, most difficult, the one who dirties his hands? What kind of leader are you? Maybe the most important question is what kind of a leader are you? Because you might know, you might be the boss leader, you might be the bad leader you are today. But the most important question is what kind of leader do you want to be? Because with the first question, this would be this is where I am. Therefore, what? The most important thing is do you want to remain where you are? If you are the boss leader, if you are the leader, uh, like all other leaders we see in our nation and in, in the nation, I mean, in the world at large. It's not the situation is not hopeless. If you answer that question, what kind of leader do you want to be? Because there's still room for you to change from that bad leader to a good leader, from that uh, desensitized leader to be to a compassionate leader, from that uh, selfish, corrupt leader you are to one who is generous, one who is all inclusive instead of exclusive. There's room for you to change. And may I urge you to be the kind of leader that you would want to follow. If you look at yourself and say, if I would come out of this body and stand over there and look at this leader pointing to yourself, would I want to follow him or her? If your answer is no, then you need to change and be that leader you would want to follow. A leader that you would say, I, I want someone, a leader just like me, I would follow that leader. That is what we need to aspire to be. But for that to happen, we need to fear God. We need to have a heart for people, generous, hospitable, and all those things that we saw as patterns of leadership that Nehemiah gave us in Nehemiah chapter 5. I pray that you would really consider answering that question. What kind of a leader would you want to be? Are you a leader you would want to follow? If not, there's time for change. This is time for change. It is now. It is not tomorrow. Wherever in whichever leadership position you are in, as I said earlier on, maybe in the home, maybe the workplace, maybe you're just an older sibling, but in one way or the other, you are a leader. Be that leader you would want to follow. May the Lord bless you during this week as you ponder on leadership. And as we are doing this prayer as well for yourself, uh, that you, you would be that leader you would like to follow, but also pray for our national leaders, that they would also be leaders who fear God and leaders who have a heart for God's people, and that they would really actively look at themselves and think about answering that question. What kind of a leader would they want to be? And maybe thrive to be the kind of leader they would like to follow. A couple of announcements for you. Uh, we are still meeting online. Um, and uh, so take advantage of our streaming platforms. Uh, we have got since we are not meeting uh, physically, our physical interaction is is, uh, is done a blow, but uh, I would ask you that if you have any needs, counseling or otherwise, uh, just contact the church office uh, and book for an appointment. Pastor Gary and I will be there to help. Uh, and also take advantage of our streaming services, Sunday school after the sermon on Sunday and Bible class for young adults and, and, and teenagers and uh, also uh, that on Wednesday, on Thursday, there is uh, a discussion on e pulse led by young people uh, following up on the Bible class lesson. Take care of that at 5 p.m. And don't forget our midweek devotion, 7 p.m. on Facebook and YouTube. Um, next week, we'll be looking at chapter 6 as we go through our series. And again, thank you for your continued giving. Um, and if you have been struggling to give, just get back to the bearings and continue to give to the Lord. Uh, 
uh, as he prospers us, he asks us to give from what he has prospered us with. So he's not asking us to give from from without, but he's saying from what I've given you, please give back to me. And uh, we are so thankful that you have been faithful uh, and uh, we are continuing to meet the church obligations we have here at Northside. Um, may the Lord bless you and may Lord, the Lord keep you. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for allowing us into your presence. Thank you for these historic figures like Nehemiah who challenge even the way we do things by their good example, a good example of leadership. I pray for each one of us who is here today that we would seriously consider asking ourselves the hard questions and faithfully answering them and also committing ourselves to do that which is right. May we be able to answer the question, what kind of a leader am I? And answer the question, what kind of leader do I want to be? And when we have done that, that we would then be led by your spirit to be the good leaders you want us to be. Thank you for your son, Jesus, who has also given us a perfect example of what God leadership is. May you help us to learn from him. And may you use us in the church. May you use us in our nation. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining me. Um, may the Lord bless you until we meet again. Bye-bye.